Hi everyone, so today I thought I'd make a quick video to show a few tips that I think might help people who are struggling to get rid of a few really common processing problems. Um, so namely the problems would be gradients uh, in the image such as light pollution or maybe some uncorrected vignetting. Um, the overall color balance of an image which can be quite tricky if you're just starting out uh, with your astro processing. Uh, and also removing excess green from your images, which is another really common problem uh, that I see uh, in a lot of places. Uh, and I used to have it too uh, when I started out. Um, so we're going to be using some free software today, which is called Cyril. Um, I used to use this software all the time to, uh, to process my own images before I got PixInsight, which is what I've now switched over to using. Uh, but that said, I was really happy with Serial for a long time uh, and I can honestly fully recommend it. Uh, it really is great software and it's constantly improving. You can see the latest release here is on the 13th of February and we're only on the 15th today. Um, so I'm going to open Serial now and we can get started. Um, fire it up. So for this tutorial, I dug out some... Uh, old data from 2019 uh, is it's going to demonstrate the problems I was talking about quite well I should think. Um, so the image we're going to process is of M42. Uh, it was taken with 294 MC Pro color camera, a 150 PDS reflector, um, no light pollution filters of any kind or anything like that uh, and it was taken from my backyard which is ball 7 so quite heavily light polluted. Uh, it's only an hour and 43 minutes of data, uh, taken with 60 second exposures. Um, so there's really not much data at all, uh, given that many astrophotos go into the 10, 20 plus hours uh, region. But hopefully we can process it to something reasonably nice without too much trouble using this uh, free software. So the first thing you're going to see when you open your image is it's going to be giving you a monochrome depiction of uh, your red, green, and blue channels alone, and then an RGB preview. Um, so the first thing you want to going to want to do is select one of the monochrome channels. Ideally, green is always going to be the, the the cleanest channel, not necessarily the strongest, but the cleanest, uh, as there's twice as many green pixels as red or blue. Uh, so you want to open up your image and select on the linear drop down here and press histogram. That's going to give you a, a a full representation of all the data in the image. Um, so you can see straight away there's some stacking artifacts uh, along the side here and to crop all those out which is going to be the first task before we do anything we're just going to hold on to the left mouse button with the uh, little arrow selected near the corners and drag out a box you should see a green box beginning to appear and that should do so re release your left mouse button and the box will stay you can finalize its position if you wish but it will fine uh, you're going to right click then and press crop so now we've got rid of all those stacking artifacts and we've got none of that nastiness to deal with um, so if you take a look at the rgb preview of this image it's going to look uh, reasonably good but quite blown out you might be tempted to look at the auto stretch but as we talked about that's quite green um, <laughs> So just stick with histogram for now for a moment. Again, select a, uh, a, color, uh, a color channel individually. So I'm going to go with green again for a moment. And to get rid of that green, so we can actually start the rest of the image process, um, we're going to select the image processing drop dropdown uh, and select color calibration. So just click that for a moment, move this uh, panel off to one side. So just the same as the crop panel, we're going to hold left mouse button down and select a, uh, a preview area out. Um, ideally selecting an area of the image that's going to represent the average background color uh, that you want to be the color of space effectively. Uh, so that should do quite nicely if we just preview again in the RGB. Uh, we see we've got no nebula selected and we're just going to go ahead and click use current selection and then hit background neutralization. So you're going to see that uh, looks like it's crushed the data. It's, it's done nothing to it just yet. Um, should hit, a, oops, hit close on that. Uh, if you view linear again, you can see the data is untouched. It's fine. Uh, all, all that we've done is aligned the color channels a little bit. So now when we look at auto stretch this time on the RGB, we can see much better representation of the data that we've got to uh, to work with. Now, 
on the note of gradients that we were talking about earlier, so you can see on this image, hopefully there's, oh, well, hopefully you can see, there's it's quite a strong gradient that goes uh, a lightning at the bottom to a darkening at the top. So the way we're going to deal with this is we're going to use uh, the background extraction tool, which is found just here, image processing and background extraction. So the first setting that you're going to see on here is the degree order. Uh, basically, the higher the number there, it goes from one to four, it's going to be the more complex uh, gradients it can deal with and the, more, the stronger the overall effect. But as this is, uh, I mean, all things considered, it's not the strongest gradient. So we're going to actually try on number one um, as it's still quite a powerful tool at that. So you can always go back and forth, by the way, with this program, just click back and forth and keep iteratively uh, trying until you find what works for you. But for now, we're just going to stay in this uh, current train of thought and uh, show you the next movement. So samples per line, that's basically going to be if I hit generate, it's going to show you it's going to set to 20. It's going to generate 20 samples per line. Pretty simple. Uh, now, this is often useful when you're dealing with the more complex gradient. But for this, it's going to be too many samples. So I'm going to drop that down to maybe 11. Yeah, that looks quite quite good. It's automatically put in points, uh, which represent samples quite near the edges of the frame, which is what you want. Uh, but you will notice that it's also sampled parts of nebula, which is not what you want. So to deal with that a little bit, we're going to do, uh, use the tolerance slider. So basically you drop this down and it's going to make it less tolerant to placing samples on actual data. Uh, so if we hit again, generate, you see it's removed a good few of the samples. It's still left some in darker regions, but that's no problem because you can just right click them. Um, sorry, when you're on a, uh, a monochrome channel, you can right click them and remove those that you don't actually want sampling. So the game plan here is basically to not select any of the nebula uh, and only have background areas selected as best as possible. Um, so you can see I'm just going around and trimming up and sorting this out a little bit. Um, largely, it looks quite good now. I think most of the nebula isn't selected, or at least the regions where it has selected it are very dim and won't have much effect on the final model, I hope. Uh, so at that, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. As I mentioned, if you didn't like the result, you could always go, oh no, and just hit back. And uh, you'd be back to where you were, ready to try again. Uh, but actually, I think that dealt with it quite well. If we view the RGB preview now, the gradient top to bottom is gone. It's again made it very green, but we'll deal with that as the next step. So I'm going to stick with that and just hit close now. Uh, so to deal with the green, we're going to use the color calibration tool again. Uh, make the same sort of selection as we made the first time, just an area of uh, the image that you want to select as background space color. Um, I'm going to use that, use the current selection and hit background neutralization. If we check the RGB preview again, you can see uh, that's done quite a good job already. Again, rid of most of that green. Still a, a little showing in the color of the nebula. This should be more blue, but instead it's kind of a, a tealy color. Um, so next up, we're going to find a region of the area that we want to use as the, the white balance reference. Um, so generally what I'd do is drag and drop a box, um, selecting a, a decent representation of all the colors uh, in the image. So for this, picture in particular you can see that it goes from red to bluey greens over here and I think that area represents quite well what we're talking about so if I just drag and drop a box again we're deliberately going to select a little bit of the core of Orion there just to uh, just show you that it's not absolutely critical this placement just uh, reasonably well uh, and you're going to be fine so just hit use current selection on that now and apply I can close that and view again the RGB preview uh, so if I just toggle back and forth a couple of times, you can see, again, it's further got rid of that green and, again, better balanced colours. Um, I don't know if you can see on this, I don't know the quality of the recording just yet, but maybe you can see down here there's some green still prevalent, some green noise, uh, which is, we're going to get rid of all that now just by using, again, image processing and remove green noise. This one's pretty self-explanatory. It's, uh, it's a little bit does what it says on the tin. So I just hit apply. 
and hopefully you can see that uh, most of that green noise is now gone and the image is in quite a well color calibrated state obviously the auto stretch is showing it and the uh, the colors are quite muted uh, but the image is indeed still linear when you view it um, in, its, in its linear state uh, for want of a better explanation but so now we can go ahead with actually stretching the data now it's it's been removed gradient and color calibrated so you've got the option of using basically the histogram tool down here uh, which would apply that same auto stretch as we just previewed which isn't bad uh, but i think it's maybe a little aggressive for this small amount of data uh, as you can see the histogram itself has become quite broken up and sawtooth that generally indicates you start to get a lot of noise in your image so i'm not going to use that just yet so i'm going to close that for a moment instead i'm going to use a uh, asyn transformation uh, which is going to try as far as i understand it to preserve some of the color information while getting a preliminary stretch done so we can use a stretch factor slider uh, don't be overly aggressive with this just a little bit is fine because we're going to actually manually stretch again in a moment using the histogram tool uh, so as long as you're bringing out some of the color that's great and then use your black point slider to uh, to bring again your background levels to something reasonably acceptable that i think that's fine for my image i've not gone too far i just demonstrate that where you crush things and you're going to start losing data uh, but i think about there that's fine so let's hit apply on that now we're going to open up the histogram tool again and we're going to finish the rest of this stretch manually uh, and the way we're going to do that is basically by using the midpoint and black point sliders so iterations of that until you're happy uh, with the stretch on your own image you can spend as little or as long time on this as you want but i'll just do a basic demonstration so we're going to take the midpoint and slide it left that's going to move the histogram to the right which would indicate it's being stretched brighter bright values uh, we'll hit apply on that for a moment and now take the black point and move that right which is going to have the effect of moving the histogram to the left um, now you can go and really ruin your data at this point if you just move that just too far you'll notice the histogram itself begins to start to clip off the uh, the left hand side and when you clip in data you're actually just telling uh, any data that's clipped that that pixel value is now black and nothing truly is black in space there's always some level of light uh, you can actually see that it's indicating that 1.39% uh, of pixels have been clipped at that point. Ideally, you want none. Uh, so that's plenty dark at that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit apply. Uh, perhaps do one more iteration of uh, manually stretching. So again, midpoint, uh, click and hold and move it to the left. You, now you can see the histogram uh, representation is starting to become quite sawtooth. Uh, and you can see probably it's starting to in, introduce some noise to the image. So I'm going to stop at that point for the, the midpoint and perhaps finish with a very small black point adjustment. Again, we're clipping very, very few pixels. That's fine. And just hit apply. The uh, the core of Orion isn't overly blown out. It's uh, that's something that could be dealt with. Uh, in a longer tutorial but this is just sort of a get you off the ground sort of thing um, now one final thing you might notice before you want to hit save or whatever is uh, the colors again have gone quite muted so we can deal with that just go to image processing and color saturation so you've got the option of applying your saturation controls to individual color channels but for the sake of this i'm just going to go globally uh, you click and hold and drag the slider up and the saturation increases down and it decreases fairly self-explanatory stuff and i'm going to go fairly far across on this uh, now the outer edges of the nebula aren't actually being saturated so much but we can we can again we can deal with that by using the background factor so the further left you move this slider the the more of the background is going to be detected and saturated so you see if we move it all the way left it's going to saturate the background which is not something you want because it's just going to make the uh, the appearance of noise far more prevalent basically uh, so ideally you want to saturate your target and not the background so we can do that just by gently moving this up 
inch by inch until we find the point where the nebula is saturated but the background isn't. So if we go ahead and, and hit apply at that and just cycle back and forth a few times, hopefully you can see there's almost no change to the background values, but the nebula itself has become quite nicely coloured uh, just as a result of that one iteration there. Um, and I'd say for a beginner tutorial, that's probably where I'd be finishing and just hitting the save out as whatever you want, a JPEG or whatever your preferred uh, method is. Maybe you want to save out as a, a TIFF again and move it to perhaps another uh, software package to deal with noise reduction. Um, but that's, that's entirely up to you and your own uh, desires for your image. But um, if you enjoyed that, if it helped you all, then please consider a, uh, a like or maybe subscribe and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you.